3D dod mae hynna i rando ar Rory Kellen Jones sef um, Sylwebu Technoleg BBC yn uh, siarad am Wel, mae'n mynd i fod yn siarad am Sima Technoleg wedi effeithio Nefydd Dyrreth ac Eilyfreg ati ac cyhoeddi um, Mae'n mynd yn y llyfr gyll gen Yn uh, siarad yn y drwm Ac um, ie, yeah, dyn rhywle eich mlaen Ond uh, nes i lwcus iawn gael cyfle i gael sgwrs bach Efo Rory ac uh, yn hyrrach yn y pnawn Felly dyma chi um, beth nath ni drafod Uh, okay, uh, welcome to Aberystwyth and thanks very much for agreeing to talk to Meta Stunch. Oh, very happy to be here. It's <laughs> great. Um, can you tell me a little bit about uh, what you're here to talk about tonight? Well, I was asked to do this about nine months ago and uh, I've been scratching my head thinking, what does this sort of great institution, which has probably welcomed, you know, distinguished writers and so on, want to hear from me? Um, and what I've worked out is uh, I've got a long career in broadcasting. Um, and I've seen huge technology changes happening in journalism, uh, completely transformed by digital technology. The way we, uh, not just the way we broadcast, but the way we gather information, completely transformed by digital technology. So I'm going to talk a bit about that, and then I'm going to move on into how I see uh, the book industry, the publishing industry, the written word being transformed by that new technology and also just raise perhaps a few questions about what it's doing to us in terms of uh, our appetite for reading and our attention span mm. whether <laughs> whether in the phrase that somebody used uh, last year Google is making you stupid yeah yeah uh, just uh, from our perspective our, our blog looks at um, web the web from a Welsh perspective yeah um, so the issues that often arise are things like the digital divide and the place of smaller languages on, languages on the web. Um, so, I mean, what are the main developments that you see at the moment um, that will have a, an effect, whether that's positive or negative, on sort of languages, particularly smaller languages on the web? I think that the first, um, let's say, 15 years of the web has been increasingly kind of Anglo-centric, you know, around the world, every, everything has moved towards English. And perhaps, you know, uh, an optimist might say that's coming to an end and languages are fighting back. Um, I think we're seeing far more people learning how to, um, you know, conquer the web space for their own language, their own culture now. We're seeing for the first time um, uh, web addresses, URLs, mm. in... in um, Arabic scripts and Chinese scripts and so on. Um, so I think that is all beginning to happen. So uh, that, that, that's a cheerful vision of it. Um, the worry would be that the web is increasingly dominated by giant businesses, whether it be Google or Apple or Facebook, uh, that are from one place on earth, from California, um, and, and that they will continue to channel it in a sort of English language way. But I, th I think... Uh, particularly with the rise of social networking, people are finding ways to connect mm. their communities and perhaps their language communities on the web in a better way than they were. Um, moving on to sort of uh, sort of British issues, I guess, um, and looking at you know where we are now and rural perhaps uh, issues. Mm -hmm. um, I noted that Jeremy Hunt uh, recently talked about the web being a new Silk Road, um, bringing trade to places that previously we're too far away from the beaten track to make a decent living. Um, but we're only too aware here of the sort of infrastructure problems and connectivity problems. And I was wondering, you know, how do you see this rhetoric playing out in reality over the coming years? Well, this is a big issue that I've been looking at a lot, the kind of um, the next generation of broadband. There's a huge lobby building mm -hmm. up in Britain, I think, particularly in rural areas, saying we must not be left behind. And that as we roll out these faster networks, the danger is that um, we, we've had a digital divide that perhaps we've done something about. We open a new one where you know some people are getting fibre and getting 100 megabit uh, minimum, 100 megabit per second speeds, and others are left really in the slow lane. And I think that is a big debate for the politicians now because they're all talking about the need for this, but there doesn't seem to be um, a financial model to make it happen. Um, there is a big lobby out there which is calling something called uh, the final third first, lobbying that, you know, of all the places in the UK that need this, it is uh, deeply rural areas that need it most. So we'll have to see how that plays. Yeah. 
Okay, that's great. Thanks. Um, one last question um, on a kind of lighter note. Uh, what's, can you let us know what piece of technology is really exciting you at the moment? What's really kind of making you go, wow? You know? it's, it's terrible to have to admit this, but in my bag there, I've got an iPad, and I'm planning. <laughs> what, what excites me is not so much the iPad as whether tonight's presentation, which I'm planning to do direct from an iPad, will okay. actually work. Um, and it's, it's not so much the iPad itself that excites me as new interfaces mm. with technology, new simpler interfaces. So next week I'm heading off to see another new interface which is Microsoft's Project Natal, okay. which is a new way of interfacing with the games console which could have big implications for the whole of computing. Mm. So that's, that's what's exciting me. The, the death of typing and mousing and, and the, the birth of another interface with computers. Brilliant. Thank you very, very much for talking to us. And, Thank uh, you. We really appreciate it. And thanks for coming to our restaurant. Great. It's been fun. Great. Thanks, thanks very much.